there, welcome to my lecture. It's entitled Teaching Interactive Music Programming, Easing into Creative Coding Skills for Music Majors. My name is Teresa Marin Nakra, and I teach at the College of New Jersey. And thank you for attending my session. Um, my talk is going to be about a course that I teach called Interactive Music Programming. It's a 300 level college music technology course that I teach at TCNJ. Um, it's been approved over 10 years ago to satisfy college level quantitative reasoning uh, requirement, which is the equivalent of our sort of math gen ed. And um, so many students have taken it for math or QR uh, credit. It runs every spring for the last 10 years. And uh, the students generally who take it are music majors or interactive multimedia majors and also some of the new students who are enrolling in our brand new music technology minor program. And the purpose of the course is to help students develop skills in creative coding and musical interaction to help them in some of their um, musical goals such as composing and creating and producing performing music and also um, it has a strong uh, music ed focus because many of the music majors who take the course are uh, certified or in the process of getting certified to teach in a K through 12 classroom setting. Uh, the course is cross-listed a couple of different ways in order to satisfy those different um, populations who take it. It counts uh, for the required music technology component of the music education certification program at the College of New Jersey. It also covers, as I mentioned earlier, the QR, or quantitative reasoning component, and it satisfies an interactive multimedia option. Um, music majors who take the course are often novices at coding and programming, but they often have strong theory backgrounds, which is very helpful. And the IMM majors who take the class are novices at music theory, and sometimes at music at all, uh, but they have generally at least one coding and one web design course under their belts, so that helps them in the creative coding side of the house. And I don't require any prior experience or coursework in music for students who take the class, and generally that seems to work out fairly well. Um, the learning goals in the class are um, to think about music procedurally and quantitatively, to develop facility in Max by Cycling74, to prototype and build and present their work. Um, I want the students to also gain introductory experience with creative composition, arranging, and improvisation, some areas of the curriculum uh, wh where they could use more coursework and more offerings. And I'd like them to uh, develop an understanding and be able to apply the algorithms, parameters, and methods that comprise an interactive approach to music making. Um, and I want them to be able to create their own um, in novel interactive music systems and to be able to perform with them and present them publicly. And at the end of the semester, to be able to look back and evaluate um, how those interactive systems worked and how, they, um, how effective they were. Uh, it also allows students to explore new ways of thinking about music that help students contextualize their experiences in music, either as educators or listeners, uh, sometimes as consumers of media and users of technology. And I think that the course gives them a new way of thinking about how to create uh, rich musical experiences with technology. And in the vein of the constructionist learning philosophy, it helps the students engage in a conversation-like process of understanding with these interactive music systems serving as evocative objects or things to think with to facilitate the construction of new knowledge in the process. And here's, here's a list of some of the topics that we cover in the course. Uh, we definitely dive right into programming fun fundamentals using the Max development environment and concepts such as loops and Boolean logic, conditionals and data structures get uh, introduced right at the beginning of the semester. Um, and I don't often use uh, computer science language around these concepts because I want them to not necessarily uh, be afraid but just jump right in and, and start to understand the structures without necessarily uh, being intimidated by any of the um, technical uh, history of these, these concepts. Uh, we also usually incorporate Makey Makey kits. Uh, we introduce MIDI fundamentals, channel messages, 
note on, note off messages, sending and receiving messages. Um, we also sometimes use some of the special uh, plugins and uh, some of the sp special extra functionality that uh, Max offers in this regard. Um, we also introduce the concept of algorithmic, com um, algorithmic composition and some of the fundamentals of digital audio, recording, sampling, playback, filtering, uh, a little bit of DSP. And sometimes, depending on their projects, they might be interested in synthesis, um, so we do jump into that a little bit. And we incorporate MIDI controllers and peripherals such as game controllers and iPads and other sensors, and sometimes uh, room-sized pieces of furniture that they construct um, as they put together their projects. And um, I use a combination of individual and team projects. So some of the team assignments include things like uh, videoing a live performance that they do with uh, Max and a Makey Makey, and then creating an, an instructable around that. Um, I have them produce a proposal where they envision and, and, and scope out a design for their public presentation. And I grade them also on the, the public presentation, the demo or the performance that they give on stage at the end of the semester. And for individual projects, I have them go deep with some of the max concepts with um, building their own algorithmic system, algorithmic music engine, um, of creating arpeggiators, and also uh, submitting their final project individually where they uh, analyze and assess how they did as well as describe it. And some of the learning activities in our course include creating, performing, and evaluating uh, the music that they create in a lab setting and on stage. We have a very project-focused, project-based approach in the course. We use a mixed format of lab and tutorials and discussion and individual feedback. And I purposefully apply the iterative design loop in a lot of the work that we do. We usually have at least two weeks for every project and that gives us a middle week in which the students can bring in their work in progress. We, have, we share it, we talk about it, we have a gentle critique in class and I find that the peer critique really helps with the iteration and the, the um, depth with which they're willing, willing to revise and revisit some of that work. Uh, we definitely go deep on audio and MIDI programming in Max and how to structure music uh, so that it sounds natural and pleasing and, uh, you know, if they want the music to uh, conform to tonal harmony, that it does so. And so we think a lot about how we build up chords and harmonic structures, harmonic progressions, that kind of thing. Um, so really we spend a lot of time attending to the real-time interactive music system idea. Uh, again, as mentioned before, MIDI and audio uh, controllers, uh, signal processing to a certain extent. And I find that having a culminating public presentation at the end of the semester can really help provide some helpful incentives for students to uh, present their best possible work. So I'd like to actually now l allow my students to um, uh, share their work with you. I, wanted to, I have a couple of videos queued up here of some of the projects that were um, generated this past spring semester. As you all know, uh, halfway through the semester we had to quickly pivot online. So in the middle of all of this work with Max and MIDI and audio, we suddenly had to, you know, switch gears. Um, all of our work was obviously done via video um, in the second half of the semester instead of live presentations in person. And I was very pleased with the quality of the work that was done at the end of the semester, and I wanted to share it with you. This first example is a quartet of singers who um, dreamed up a quartet um, project, one of these kind of side-by-side -side, uh, choral projects where the four of them are each singing in their own uh, little window, and they've designed an interactive chordal accompaniment uh, that is flexible, so they are not stuck to a click track in this case, but um, one of them has a Wiimote in his hand and he's using the plus key to um, basically accompany the quartet by triggering the next chord and the next chord. So what I really loved about this project was that unlike a lot of the other compiled video projects that we saw this spring, uh, this one did not require the vocalists to uh, pre-record to a click track, but rather they could record with each other live and have the accompaniment follow them instead of the other way around. So let me play this excerpt for you. 
So darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, stand, stand, stand by me. Stand by me. Okay, so there we have it. Um, the results of my interactive music programming class from the spring. I was really pleased with what the students managed to do and I think the creativity inherent in the course and in the creation of interactive music systems just is, uh, was really helpful during the pandemic time and uh, I was just I wanted to share with you some of the approaches that I've taken with that course and I welcome your questions during the Q&A. Thank you for your attention.